The Sophia Observatory is no static observatory, but a massive Boeing 747 SP plane. And while it was decommissioned last year, I was on the very first tour of the facility during my short trip to Arizona. Now, the aircraft has its engines ripped out. It's pretty much laid to rest at the Pima Space Museum in Tucson. Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu, and in this week's video, let's take a look at Sophia in detail. So the reason that I was in Tucson was to give an invited talk on AI in astronomy at the Astronomical Data Analysis Software and Systems Conference, aka ADAS. It was at the University of Arizona and this conference is filled with the likes of all the people that work on astronomical databases that you might expect. Like, So it was really impressive that the conference dinner was held at the Pima Air and Space Museum, one of the largest non-government funded aviation and space museums in the world. They also do tours of the Boneyard, which is the largest aircraft storage and preservation facility in the world. And you can just imagine how cool it would be to see an airplane graveyard but unfortunately, this has been closed for the foreseeable future. Anyway, inside the museum, we took a short ride through the facility to Sophia. And honestly, it's just like any other plane. It's hard to imagine that this was an observatory. It's been completely stripped out. NASA immediately took back their mirrors and the Germans, DLR, immediately took back their scientific instruments. And there's rumors of potentially putting these instruments on something completely new, like a space balloon or a Zeppelin, which would be pretty awesome to see if it were true. SOFIA, which stands for the Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy, housed a 2.7 meter reflecting telescope that operated typically at 14 kilometers altitude, so much higher than most of Earth's atmosphere. The water vapor in the atmosphere absorbs quite a bit of infrared radiation. So by flying above this, Sophia could get clearer infrared images and spectra that are impossible to obtain from the ground. Observing the universe in infrared light allows astronomers to study objects and phenomena that may be obscured or invisible in other parts of the the spectrum, like cool objects such as planets, comets and asteroids, and brown dwarfs that don't emit much visible light. Infrared light can penetrate cosmic dust clouds that block visible light, enabling the study of star-forming regions and centers of galaxies, also like things like molecular clouds. Many chemical compounds in space, such as water, carbon monoxide, and organic molecules emit or absorb infrared light. Thus, infrared spectroscopy can be used to study the chemical composition and physical properties of interstellar clouds. While both SOFIA and the well-known JWST are both infrared observatories, they're quite different. Most importantly, the instruments on board of SOFIA are interchangeable and maintainable. The instrument scientists on board were in charge of checking the data were okay. Every day, Sophia would fly for 10 hours straight, flown by military pilots. And then after the 10 hour flight, the instrument scientists would still have to transfer over 50 gigabytes of data over to Germany. This would take over eight hours. You also have security personnel escorts on board and telescope operators that drive the actual telescope. This telescope peaks out of a latch, 5.5 meters by 4.1 meters inside. And this is coming out of the side of the plane. So it's almost like a, it's almost like the size of a double garage door. When I was on board, the instruments had already been removed and replaced by a weight to keep everything balanced. And this was a key concern during the entire lifetime of Sophia. Even without the latch open, there would be significant turbulence and vibrations in all directions that needed to be stabilized. They had this requirement that point sources, so things like distant stars, which should appear as single points, appear no larger than 1.8 arc seconds in size. So this is equivalent to resolving a Boeing 747 plane on the surface of the moon. To help it to do this, Sophia would use fiber optic gyroscopes. The aircraft moves around the telescope and not the other way around. Once the telescope is locked on its target in space, the aircraft is actually maneuvered to accommodate the telescope's orientation. This means that despite the aircraft flying at high speeds and high altitudes, the target remains steadily in the telescope's field of view, allowing for clear, uninterrupted observations. 
It also employs a spherical oil bearing to support the telescope's weight while allowing smooth and precise movements. It's essentially a spherical shell filled with oil and the telescope sits within this shell. And the design allows the telescope to rotate freely and very smoothly in all directions, azimuth and elevation. And this is necessary for aiming the telescope at different parts of the sky. But it's not only there to reduce friction, the oil also helps to dampen vibrations. But this comes with the challenges of needing a regular cleaning and level checking of oil. Whilst on board, I also heard of an incident where they had to use duct tape to fix some of the cables. But the vibrations were so strong that eventually this duct tape fell off and they had to dismantle the entire thing just to get to it. Ultimately, Sophia has decommissioned because the cost of the mission just wasn't worth the scientific output. The annual operating cost of Sophia was around $85 million per year. Even the tour guides thought that the outreach campaigns um, that Sophia were achieving were much bigger than the scientific gains. But there's no denying that Sophia was a unique and valuable tool within infrared astronomy. That's all for this week's video. Thank you so much to my YouTube Perk subscribers for supporting this video. And as always, if you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.